In under five minutes, I'm going to run you through the performance and benchmarks of the HP Envy X360. This laptop does come with the Ryzen 7 5700U, 16 gigs of RAM, integrated graphics, and a 512 gig SSD. First and foremost, kicking things off in Cinebench R20, it falls in about the middle of the charts with a solid multi-core score in R20. For R23, it's really making it up there. It even tops above the powerful MSI Creator 15 with the i7-10. 875H for the R23 scores. For Geekbench single core and multi-core performance, it really does step it up even amongst a lot of the more powerful H series processors. Now getting into the After Effects benchmarks, because it does not have a dedicated GPU and it is not a high performance H series processor, it does well, but it's not great. It beats out a lot of the more U series processors, which are mobile processors and thin and light laptops. So as far as its category is concerned, it does well, but as far as overall against other high performing H series laptops, it does pretty good. For 4K export out of Premiere Pro, it's respectable. For the 1080p export, it impresses me quite a bit being that it beats out the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 9 5900HS. Not bad for a little thin and light laptop. So for 1080p, this is a great laptop. However, if you want to edit 4K, you're going to have some struggles at full quality resolution while editing. You're going to drop about 10,850 frames out of the 16,177 in the project. If you edit 1080p, you'll only drop about 200-ish frames for that entire project. So I would definitely say this is more of a 1080p video editing laptop than it is a 4K video editing laptop. Considering Photoshop, I would recommend this laptop with 16 gigs of RAM. It is really going to be the sweet spot for performance. If you go up to 64 gigs of RAM, you're going to get about 100 points more than 16. Um, if you get 32, it's an okay upgrade. But if you're down to 8 gigs of RAM, this laptop really struggles. It really likes that sweet spot of 16 gigs of RAM. Dual versus single channel RAM, I definitely recommend dual channel. So that would be two 8 gig memory sticks. Um, but if you do single channel, you might lose 16. 60 to 100 points because it really likes having that dual channel RAM. For the thermals, that's one area that I was pretty disappointed with this laptop. I thought it would perform much better. It turns out that these side vents on the top of the keyboard deck don't vent well with the fans. The model that has the vent along the top of the keyboard deck is much better because it really vents well with the fans right beneath it. However, this one runs pretty warm for most tasks. Even at idle, I was seeing 55 degrees Celsius. Now, in regards to battery life, I was quite impressed with this laptop. From productivity tasks, to streaming video, to intense Photoshop workflows, to video editing, this thing really held up. Now, for Photoshop or video editing, I definitely recommend bringing the charger along with you, but for an average workday or streaming video, you can get away with a pretty solid battery life with this 51 watt hour battery. This laptop is not only thin and light with an aluminum chassis and solid performance, but it has excellent screen brightness and color accuracy. The model I have in front of me does have the 400 nits upgraded screen, which doesn't quite reach 400 nits, but it does reach 99% sRGB, so it helps out with the creative professionals with better color accuracy. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you guys here in the next one.